Hello and welcome to a visual and audio presentation of fetal blood sampling. Fetal blood sampling has been in use for over 50 years since its introduction in 1962 and it uses pH as an indicator of fetal hypoxia. It is advised in the presence of a suspicious or pathological trace unless there is clear evidence of acute compromise. Time pressure is an intrinsic component of fetal blood sampling. One study has shown that in 35% of cases, time from decision to result is greater than 20 minutes. Contraindications include maternal infection, HIV, hepatitis, fetal bleeding disorders and prematurity. Be familiar with the equipment. Know the type of fetal blood sampling kit used in the labour ward in which you work. Explain the procedure and verbally consent the mother. Check the blood gas analyzer is ready for immediate use. Here is the disposable fetal blood sampling kit. Be familiar with its contents. Lay the contents out aseptically prior to commencing the procedure. The kit contains the blade holder, long swabs for the application of soft paraffin to the fetal head. This can also be used for cleaning the fetal head. The amnioscope with obturator in situ. Note laid out the tube holder for the preheparonized capillary tubes and on the left hand side of the screen the holder for swabs used for cleaning the fetal head. There is also a small tube containing soft white paraffin. Now, attach the blade to the top of its holder. Some hospitals may use a reusable fetal blood sampling kit and if so be familiar with its contents. This is now appearing on screen. Positioning the patient. While the lithotomy position can be used, the left lateral position is recommended. Positioning a pillow between the legs aids comfort and maintains a stable position. External fetal monitoring must continue throughout the procedure. Clean and drape the area again prior to the procedure. Now, once you've cleaned the area, ensure your kit is ready. Attach a capillary tube to its holder and have the kit within arm's reach of you for when you are commencing the procedure. The procedure, talking through the steps. Once again, check cervical dilatation and fetal head position. Insert the amnioscope posteriorly along the long axis of the vagina into the posterior fornix. Gently maneuver anteriorly to rest on the fetal head. Remove the obturator, attach the light source and visually confirm position. Clean and dry the fetal scalp. When applying ethyl chloride spray, a second glove should be worn and then removed, maintaining sterility. Alternatively, an assistant may apply the spray. This spray provides some anesthesia to the area and increases blood flow by causing local vasodilatation. Gently rubbing a long swab on the area further cleans the area and encourages local blood flow. Apply soft white paraffin to the area via a long swab. This aids the formation of a bleb of blood by altering the surface tension, preventing the bleb of blood from running. Now, with your blade, firmly make a stab incision, breaking the surface cleanly. As on the screen right now, if a second incision is needed, do it 90 degrees to the first. Now, place the capillary tube just against the bleb. This allows capillary action to fill the tube. It takes 50 microliters, approximately 3 centimeters in a capillary tube for a valid fetal blood gas sample. If possible, take two samples so that results can be correlated or if one sample contains air bubbles, for example, the second sample can be used. Processing the sample. Ensure bleeding from the scalp is stopped and apply pressure if necessary. Seal the tube with caps. Mix the tube for 50 seconds, if necessary, with a mixing wire and magnet and this reduces air bubbles and prevents coagulation of the sample. At the blood gas analyzer and mod midwife, competent in its use, inputs patient details and processes the sample. The result will then be displayed on screen and printed. Document the results on the CTG, in the maternal medical notes and in the baby's chart. Sources of error include the presence of air bubbles, contamination with meconium or amniotic fluid, scalp edema or caput and a delay in processing of the sample. A normal result is a pH greater than or equal to 7.25. If this is the case, repeat the sample in under one hour if the trace remains pathological. A borderline result is a pH between 7.21 and 7.24. Repeat in under 30 minutes if the trace remains pathological. An abnormal result, pH less than or equal to 7.2, seek immediate consultant advice.
In regards to interpretation, consider progress of labour, pH of previous samples, clinical context. And if an FBS is taken, always take core bloods post delivery. In summary, preparation, positioning, proficiency with procedure, and processing by experienced personnel.